plague. We are in the middle of a fucking plague. And you behave like this. Plague. 40 million infected people is a fucking plague. And nobody acts as it is. As if it is. Nobody here either. Nobody in this hospital. Nobody in this city. Nobody in this world. 40 million people is a fucking plague. And you're yelling at me because of some stupid thing you didn't even call to ask me about. You don't know what I did. We are in the worst shape we have ever, ever, ever been in. Nothing is working. None of that shit you saw on that screen is working. Nothing, none of the shit that is in the pipeline that these people are studying is working. You heard what George Bush said when we went to Kennebunkport. He's more inclined to, to, to he feels more sorry for, for the unemployed. That's what we're in. Every person I talk to, in every city, in every agency, gay, straight, AIDS, is as despondent as they can possibly be. Nobody knows what to do next. Nobody knows what to do next. And we have a president who cares more about the unemployed and pits people against each other just like these people are doing, then he cares about us. Sound familiar? And that was 30 years ago. Larry Kramer died of pneumonia on May 27, 2020, less than a month from his 85th birthday. After graduating from Yale in 1957 with a degree in English, Larry Kramer began his film career at the age of 23 as a teletype operator at Columbia Pictures, where he worked his way into the story department rewriting scripts. In 1969, he wrote and produced Women in Love, garnering an Oscar nomination for the screenplay. He followed up with the screenplay for Lost Horizon, a truly dreadful musical based on Frank Capra's film of the same name. Perhaps his best known early work and certainly his most controversial, is faggots. Using graphic descriptions of sexual acts, Kramer depicted a superficial subculture in which gay men were wasting their talents on promiscuity and drugs. Several years before the AIDS crisis unfolded, he suggested that the uninhibited pursuit of sex and hedonism could lead to widespread illness and a culture of self-indulgence. The Washington Post called the novel revolting, and even though upon its release, it was banned from the only gay bookstore in Manhattan at the time, the novel became a bestseller and is still in print to this day. More recently, The Normal Heart, Kramer's play about a writer named Ned Weeks as he nurses his lover who is dying of a yet unnamed disease, won universal praise. The play trashes the medical establishment the government, and yes, gay leaders whom Kramer deemed too complacent, too comfortable, and too absent from the fight against AIDS. The longest running play in the history of New York's public theater, The Normal Heart was revived on Broadway in 2004, and again in 2011, winning a Tony Award for Best Revival of a Play. In 2014, Larry Kramer won the Prime Time Emmy Award for Outstanding Writing for HBO's film adaptation of The Normal Heart. More importantly, for the HIV and AIDS community, Larry Kramer was the godfather of AIDS activism. Although he had shunned gay activism for years, when his friends from Fire Island started getting sick and dying, his activism was born. In 1981, he invited gay men from New York City area to his apartment to listen to a doctor tell them that their friends' illnesses were related and research needed to be done. And from that meeting sprang the Gay Men's Health Crisis, the primary organization to raise funds and provide services to people afflicted with AIDS. 
As gay men's health began to concentrate on social services for men who were dying, Kramer insisted that they fight for funding from New York City. Targeted were Mayor Ed Koch, whom Kramer called a murderer, and gay men who seemed to think that if they ignored the new disease, it would simply go away. When doctors determined that HIV trans was transmitted through sex, Kramer demanded that Gay Men's Health deliver that message to as many gay men as possible, but they refused. Which led Larry to write the essay entitled 1,112 and Counting. Unfortunately, his loud, brash, in-your-face demeanor and rhetoric proved far too outrageous for the Gay Men's Health Crisis Board of Directors, and they removed him from it. Crushed by his expulsion, Kramer's most significant role in the fight against HIV and AIDS arose from that disappointment. In 1987, he was one of the founders of the AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power, better known as ACT UP the controversial but effective direct action protest group that targeted government agencies and corporations for the lack of treatment or funding for people with AIDS. And their first target was the Food and Drug Administration. On March 24th, 1987, about 250 people blocked traffic in front of the FDA's Wall Street offices. Storming and taking over government offices, blocking traffic with sit-ins and die-ins were the group's tactics. Getting arrested was one of the group's primary objectives as it would focus attention onto the pandemic. Kramer himself was arrested dozens of times. It is not an exaggeration to say that with ACT UP, Larry Kramer changed the face of medical health policy in the United States. Dr. Anthony Fauci of the CDC with whom Kramer had viciously feuded before they had reconciled in recent years, had said that, quote, ACT UP put medical treatment in the hands of the patients, and that is the way it ought to be. There is no question in my mind that Larry helped change medicine in this country, and he helped change it for the better. In American medicine, there are two eras, before Larry and after Larry. In his incendiary 1,112 and counting, Kramer wrote, I don't want to die. I can only assume you don't want to die. Can we fight together? And for four decades, Kramer led that fight. Damned by some as a loudmouth provocateur, revered by many as a savior when we needed one the most, Larry Kramer's legacy lives on in the lives of all of us long-term survivors. We would not be alive today if it were not for Larry's loudmouth, outrage, dedication, and dogged determination. Yes, we have lost a titan, but his words continue to enrage and inspire us, and I personally will carry them in my heart for the rest of my life, be it normal or not.